If you've come to learn about some of the very best Fidelity mutual funds of all time, you've come to the right place. Where in this video, we're gonna cover that four specific Fidelity mutual funds that I would highly consider you take a look at for your portfolio or for your, one of your retirement accounts. I've gotten request after request after request for the last several months for a video like this. So sorry for the delay, but here it is, ladies and gentlemen, as we discuss Fidelity funds. How incredible this is gonna be? If we could just harness this power and use it for our own personal gain, there'd be no stopping us. As always, the spreadsheet you're gonna see on screen is free to download. There's a Dropbox link in the description section of this video and the comment section, so enjoy. So the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna cover four of the best performing funds with you one at a time, do a quick overview of each one, and then towards the end of the video, I'm actually gonna share with you some of the best performing Fidelity Mutual Funds so far this year, so that not only you get prior history, but you get what's going on currently within the market and you might have time to capitalize on it. The date of research on all of the investments we're looking at today is on February 24th of 2019. If you click the link here, it will open up directly to the Fidelity website where you can learn more about each individual mutual fund we're discussing today. What you're gonna find, guys, is that the mutual funds in this video range anywhere from 30 to 40 years old, so they have a lot of history behind them, which is what I really look for when trying to choose a mutual fund. I want something not only with a good track record, but a good track record for a long time. That way I feel very safe or more secure when I'm about to invest my hard earned money in it. Now just to be clear, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not an investing expert of any kind, so please do your own homework and research before choosing or selecting any of the funds we discuss in this video. The first fund we're looking at in this video is the Fidelity Select Retailing Portfolio. It has an NAV is basically the price or the net asset value of the fund. So right now it goes for about $15.17 per share or per unit per se, since it's a mutual fund. Yield on these, on all four of these is gonna be zero as you're gonna see. Beta is 1.14. Now remember, the higher the beta number, the more volatile it can be. So these things can certainly be volatile. But overall, these funds that I'm showing you guys in this video have beaten the S&P 500 for multiple years in a row on average. Currently with the retailing portfolio, as we've seen the stock market start to rebound in 2019, this thing is up about 11%. Years in existence is 34 years. I'm 34. Oh, I'm getting old, guys, I'm getting old. Expense ratio is less than 1%, and you're gonna see that on all of these different investments we're looking at, it's less than 1%, so it's very low fees overall. And I looked into this because I know this is a common question I got in some of my Vanguard mutual fund videos and ETF videos. So for Fidelity mutual funds, the ones we're talking about today, to my understanding, if you have a retirement account, like a 401k or, or something like that, and it's out through work, there is no initial minimum investment, however, just by me going, I went to my Ameritrade account and I tried to purchase these funds and I found there actually was a minimum investment. So if you're looking to invest in it in like a standard brokerage account or even your own IRA, then I think what you're gonna run into or you may run into, unless maybe you are have a, an actual Fidelity account, maybe if you have a Fidelity account, maybe this would be waived, but any other type of account, like a standard brokerage account that's not through Fidelity, I think what you're gonna find is that there is an, an initial minimum investment and it's 2,500 bucks. So if you're gonna invest in this, you need to have $2,500 or more if you're not doing this through a normal retirement account, such as your 401k or something like that. This graph or chart comes directly from the Fidelity website, and what you're gonna see is that the purple line, which is represents this fund, is, or that's the ticker symbol of it, is FSRPX, has greatly outperformed the S&P 500 over the last several years from this graph below. So let's look at the average annual return. So I know, Typically, we're, a lot of people wanna know what has this thing done over the years? So these are the average annual returns. These are directly from the Fidelity website. Let me zoom in so you guys can see that better. So in the last year, you can expect about a 3.5% return because the market took quite of a dive towards the end of the year. Three-year return on average is about 16% per year. Five-year return is about 16%, not bad. 10-year return average is about 23%. Now remember, 
The prior returns do not guarantee the same performance in the future. Just because something did well in the past doesn't mean it will always do, do well. However, however, these things have been around for a long time and on average, this thing beats the S&P 500 return and you can see that since inception. So for 34 years, its average annual return is right around 13% or 14%. That's not bad at all in my opinion, if you were to ask me. Okay, and so what does this thing hold? It has, this top 10 holdings include Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, TJ Maxx, or that's the TJX, the booking holding company, which I'm not sure what that is, Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Ross Stores, oh my gosh, have you ever been in Ross? It's always busy, I've, every time I go in there, it's packed. O'Reilly Automotive and AutoZone. So some interesting picks here, very different from what I've seen over on Vanguard's side with similar mutual funds. So I like what I'm seeing here. It has a total of 48 holdings in this particular fund. So the only way I found in order to see the full listing on the Fidelity website for some of these mutual funds is you, you would need to click the prospectus. And then on the prospectus, you would click the tab. I think it says like other portfolio holdings or something like that. Well, then you would find a full list of its holdings. This one only has 48, so I could fit them all here on this one screen, on this one work tab, but some of the other ones have more, but that's where you'll find them. This is definitely a growth type of mutual fund, which you guys can see here. And if you want the breakdown or the sub-industry diversification breakdown of what type of investments it holds, I've provided that information for you guys right here. But like, go ahead and review this in your own time or feel free to pause the video. Let's move on to the next one. Before I forget to mention it, guys, is one thing I wanna say is we are looking at all mutual funds here. I know I've done a lot of video on ETFs, but one of the primary differences of a mutual fund over an ETF is a mutual fund is very actively managed. So you have, you have real people looking at these things fairly often and determining the investment mix within these to try to get the best performance they can for their investors. Now, is there any surprise that one of the best performing funds of all time, just like in Vanguard's, is a healthcare one? So this is the Fidelity Select Healthcare Portfolio. I don't think healthcare is going anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's gonna be around for a long time. There's so many people out there, as the world population expands, who need medical care. Even pig men need medical care. Now listen to me, you little quack. There was a half man, half pig in that room over there. Now where is he? Where is he? Half what? You know what I mean. Pork, sausage, of a D, of a D. That's all, folks. Okay, so for the ticker symbols F S P H X, which I'm totally gonna blotch some of these. I can I just have a feeling. I just have a feeling I'm gonna mess it up, guys. The net asset value so is around 25 bucks right now. So that's roughly what you can buy it for per share or per unit. Beta is just a tad bit higher than the last one we just looked at at 1.15. Year to date return, it's kicking butt. This is this has one of the best returns so far this year of the four we're discussing in this video. It's at about a 12.5% return with only about two months in to the year. Years in existence, it's been around for 38 years. 38 years, ladies and gentlemen. Expense ratio is right there. Just like the other one, has an initial minimum investment of about 2,500 bucks unless you're doing this through your 401k. So here we go. Average annual returns before taxes, fees, and distributions. So for one year, we're looking at about a 9% return. A three-year return is about 13% on average. A five-year return, you can expect about 11%. 10-year return is right around 19 or 20. And since inception, now this one has done fantastic since inception of averaging about 15% rate of return per year for 38 freaking years. That is amazing. So you'll notice on all these investments, guys, that we're looking at today have a yield of zero. And I think that's because the returns that we just look at here, I couldn't, I can't tell you with 100% certainty, but I think these returns reflect dividends being reinvested into them. So I think that's the total return you're getting with the growth, the dividend, everything, as far as I can understand or as far as I can see it from Fidelity's website. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about top 10 holdings. Now, medical stocks, it's one of the areas where I really like to have a mutual fund or ETF because a lot of the times I really don't, I'm not that familiar with the companies like with biotech and the medical industry because I'm not a doctor, I'm a CPA in real life, right? So what's nice about something like this within a mutual fund is that you have people who study this stuff all day long who are choosing and selecting some of the best companies that are out there, or at least what they feel are some of the best companies out there 
based on their research. So number one is United Health Group. There's Beckton Dickinson, which I don't know what that is, Boston Scientific, Humana, Amgen. I think they're a they're a drug manufacturer. Cigna Healthcare. So there's a lot of it's a mix of it looks like insurance health healthcare insurance providers as well as pharmaceutical companies and things like that is what I would expect here. Now there's 99 total holdings within this fund, and those you know of course we just went over the top 10, and I've included some of their holdings right here. This is from the prospectus is where I found this. As you can see, some of the other companies this thing holds, but there's about 99 holdings in total. And once again, guys, here's the sub-industry diversification breakdown and the, it's, you can see that this is a growth-focused investment. So if you're somebody looking to, for growth in your portfolio, this is totally one to consider. Bottom line on this one though, guys, is that if you're looking to invest in the medical sector or healthcare sector, this is certainly one you should be taking a look at. Next, we have the Fidelity Blue Chip Growth Fund, FBGRX. All right, so net asset value of about 95 bucks. Beta is about 1.03. 13% rate of return so far, which is doing, it's doing fantastic. It's been around for 32 years. One year return is about 2%. Three year return is about 19%. Five year is 13 and a half. The 10 year return is about 18% on average and since inception about 11% per year, which is not bad at all. Of course, this is before taxes, fees and distributions. What's it hold? The top 10 holdings, it holds Amazon, Alphabet, which is Google. It owns Apple, Microsoft. You can see a lot of tech companies. Facebook, Tesla, Salesforce. I don't know sure what this Drew Labs is. I'm not sure what that is to be honest. Broadcom and then Visa are that's top 10 holdings. This one holds the most stocks of all of them. So it has 346 different holdings. So down here to the left here, here we go. There, yeah, there's over 300 holdings, about three, almost 350 in total. Here are some more of its holdings. I've included this from the perspective so you guys can check it out. Nvidia is in here, Netflix. So a lot of technology, a lot of communication companies, things like that. A lot of big names in here. Of course, that's why it's called the Blue Chip Growth Fund because there's a lot, Blue Chip means large established companies. And usually, and for, history has shown that if you routinely invest in Blue Chip stocks, which are companies that have been around for a very long time, very well established brand names, your odds are very good you're gonna do pretty well in the stock market most of the time. There is exceptions to that. But most of the time, if you buy into the big players, they're probably going to continue to do well. Just keep an eye on them, monitor what's going on within the company. But most of these companies over the years, they've done fantastic. And I would totally recommend you checking this one out for your portfolio, especially within your 401k. I have something similar to this within my 401k at work. And if you haven't caught the pattern already, all of these mutual funds guys, they pretty much have a growth focus. They're all focused on growth and high returns. You can see the breakout of the sectors right here. And asset allocation is right down here in terms of, like I said, most of these that we're discussing are truly US domestic equities. Next on our list, and one that really stood out to me as being quite interesting is the Fidelity Select Air Transportation Portfolio. What a name, F-S-A-I-X. When I read Select Air Transportation Portfolio, it kind of made me think of that video game now, which is kind of old, StarCraft. You guys remember the drop ships? I'm listening. Strap yourselves in, boys. Report for duty. I love those damn things. Love those drop ships. I'd be dropping tanks all day. So this particular mutual fund will literally take you into the sky. So we have a net asset value of 76 and a half. It has a beta highest of all of them so far of 1.26. Look at this year to date return. This year to date return is killing it guys. 16% if you're invested in this since the beginning of the year. Dominating. This one took quite a bit of a dive last year, probably because I know the aero, not aerospace, but the, this particular industry or transportation can be a little bit more volatile than some of the other sectors. But so for one year, it's down about 6%, but over three years, it's, it's starting to come back. So it's at 16.42% is 
average over three years. Five years is about 10, 10%. 10 year average is about 18%. And since inception, about 11%. So most of these, I think you're gonna see by now, or probably have caught on by now, that most of the investments we're discussing, the best ones that Fidelity offers, at least from my research and from, in my opinion, they will have returns since inception averaging anywhere from 11 to 15%, which if you know that, if you follow the stock market, the S&P 500 average annual return is usually ranging only from six to 8%. So on average, these things beat the market. So what does this thing own? Well, it actually, it does not own a lot. So it's number one holding is Delta Air, followed by Boeing, United Parcel Service, or UPS, Southwest Airlines. So any, as you can see, pretty much anything transportation related, this thing's gonna own. It only has 34 holdings in general. So because of that, I was able to fit it all right here. It's, it's pretty cool, some of the companies they own, at least in my opinion. A lot of big name airline companies, transportation companies, and things like that. So every fund we just looked at, from Fidelity Select Retailing Portfolio, to the health, Fidelity Select Healthcare Portfolio, the Blue Chip Growth Fund, and this transportation fund we just looked at, I believe all of them have a growth focused investment philosophy and that's what they're that's what they're doing and that's why you're able to get such high returns on these things if you invest in these types of mutual funds. Real quickly, before we head on over and look at the best performing Fidelity mutual funds so far this year, let's look at the comparison on this, okay? So this is where I've summarized all the information from all these four tabs. It's all on this one screen for you guys. And let me zoom in just a little bit and so you guys can see that a little bit better. There you go. As you guys can you guys can compare the average annual returns between all four right here, the beta, the yield, the year-to-date returns, all of that if you'd like to. And then I've also included graphs, and which I normally do in my Vanguard videos as well. I've also included graphs so you can see how these things compare on different time spans against the S&P 500. And everything's color coordinated with the tab of the workbook down here. So blue is, is this the first one, the red one's the healthcare sector one, the gray line is the transportation sector, and the black line is compares it against the S&P 500. So you guys can see how these things perform against the S&P 500 or the market. So if you go down, there's a, there's a three month graph, and you guys can pause the video on screen here as we're going through these. I'm not gonna, Read, read this off to you guys. Here's a six month graph for you guys. And then there's a five year graph right there. And you guys can see that these things have performed very well. And the retailing sector portfolio has done quite well in the past five years, as you guys can see from this chart. So by looking at those four mutual funds, we have seen that historically those funds have done phenomenal, right? For Fidelity, they've done, if you've been invested in those, you've done very well. But what about Today, what's going on today in today's markets? How do you get, you know, what's the feel of the market right now? So now we're gonna take a look real quick. Let's see what's going on this year, what's going on in the markets and which funds are having the best response to what's going on globally, politically, and then just within the current economy as it stands. So right now, as of 2-24-19, this is from the Fidelity website, the best performing mutual fund year to date, this column right here, this is the, this, the one in gray, this is the year to date column, okay? So defense type of ETFs are performing the best. So this is the Fidelity Select Defense. And so I'll include the ticker symbol for that here on screen, guys, so you can go check it out. Also the, the mid cap blend. Here's the, the transportation one, which we just looked at a moment momentarily. So that's number three on here, year to date. I just wanted to show you this real quick, just so you get a feel for what's going on in the economy right now and which type of investments and which mutual funds are doing really well. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll look at year to date to get a to get a feel for the market, to see what's moving or what's declining, to see where I might invest my money. All right, everybody, well, thank you for being patient with me to be able to get around to make this video. I know it's been a long time coming. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here. It means a lot to me. I know, I know it takes time to watch these videos, to, to study this stuff and, and whatnot, but I hope you enjoy the spreadsheet. If you like the video, do me a huge favor and drop a like, it really helps us out. Also, share this information with a friend, especially somebody who's into investing or trying to figure out what Fidelity funds to maybe look at. And last but not least, if you're new to Money in Life TV, well, welcome to the channel. Our goal and mission on Money in Life TV is to help you become fiscally fit. And the way we do that is by teaching finances, investing, and taxes on a regular basis, and just life tips in general. Well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, in the comment section, let me know your thoughts on these. Of the four mutual funds we discussed in this video, 
Which one of the four would you pick for yourself or would you think would be best for your portfolio? Let me know your thoughts, any questions you might have down in the comment section down below. Well, have a great week, everybody. It's been a blast hanging out with you as always. Now take this information and use it to live your life on Cage. Bye, guys. Peace. If you come to learn about some of the very best Vanguard, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoops, talking about fidelity here, folks. Talking about fidelity. I know where we can go. I know where we can go. And it's all you.